Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm following up on my initial impressions video of Chris Tales that I recorded last week. I've now completed the game after about 16 and a half hours and here's my final review. I hope you enjoy. My initial impression of Chris Tales was that the game had a lot of potential, a strong art direction, a well built world with a promising story, good characters and an interesting game mechanics. A couple of these were being influenced by some of the greatest JRPGs of all time, it was ticking all the right boxes. The one part that I was worried about was that the RPG elements in terms of levelling up and improving your party was limited. After spending more time with the game, did it live up to its potential or was it a case that it was style over substance? Chris Tales is a story of time mages trying to prevent the end of the world. It is a story that has been played out in many media but Chris Tales manages to make it feel unique. Firstly the game screen is split into three triangles, past, present and future. This mechanic allows for some great exploration. Chess may only appear in certain time periods and interactions with characters change depending on the NPC's age as they may have different views of the world compared to when they were younger and my personal favourite is that it all adds to the mystery. When we see a couple in the present, but only one of them is in the future, it raises questions. What happened to them? Can this outcome be prevented? And sometimes, by a side mission, they can. The continuous importance of time and the reminder that these towns, the people, and the world as a whole will perish through the permanent glimpse into the future whilst traversing towns makes for a great aspect that really engaged me in the story. Nothing was more relieving than seeing actions carried out in quests and side missions having a positive effect of the future. The majority of my 16 and a half hour playthrough of the game was high quality storytelling and gameplay. However, the final quarter of the story left me feeling a little bit underwhelmed when compared to the rest of the story and gameplay to that point. This was mostly due to the fact that after I'd completed the final boss, my first question was, is it over? It did not seem like a victory in a war to end all wars that the game had built up to. There were harder battles elsewhere. I think what made this final stretch even harder to get through was the fact that it was long and drawn out. The final part has you going all over the map, twice. This part was so drawn out I ended up equipping an item that prevented random encounters just so I could get through it quickly. That being said, this should not put the players off of this game. The game offers a very good story that whilst predictable in some instances, it was completely unexpected in other areas. The game left me second guessing most relationships and characters right up until the end. The story is definitely one of Chris Tao's strengths, and no good story is possible with weak characters. This game has a cast of deep and interesting characters. From the offset, Matthias, Chris Bell, Christopher and the many NPCs that we meet all add to the story. Whether it's a few lines regarding their concerns for the future or their family, they help to build the world around them. The team that is assembled grows, and many of the characters that we meet throughout the story return later. In terms of the party members, each stands on their own merit as they will have their own history and in some instances inner turmoils to contend with, each seemingly with something to prove in the story, as opposed to, here's a fun character to add to your team. The weakest character in the game is Chris Bell. She has little interaction with some characters and often comes across as bland due to her kill them with kindness persona. Whilst I get why she reacts this way, and also it is common for the main protagonist to not be the most exciting character in the RPG. Hell, most of them don't even speak. However, my personal preference is when a main protagonist has a voice in an RPG. I prefer it when you have a choice on how to respond. In this respect, the player has little control in how Chris Bell responds outside of the story decisions. Moving on to gameplay now and my initial concerns about the battle system and RPG elements of the game not being deep enough were incorrect. What I end up learning is that Chris Tales slowly adds new elements to the game instead of having access to them all at once. The slow build of adding additional layers to the game works quite well. Whilst leveling up party members results in predetermined stat improvements, which was an initial criticism of mine, the game gives access to equipment changes, modifications and weapon enhancements. These elements do a good job in allowing the player to modify their characters as they see fit. I found Christopher to be my go-to mage for the end game. I managed to put a pair of boots on him that reduced his attack by 70 points but increased his magic attack by 70. This in turn turned him into the ultimate mage. In the end I turned my other two characters in my party to pure attack and healers. 
Having the ability to change party members' builds to suit your own style really made me feel like I had tailored the game to my liking. One aspect that made the game feel fresh was that each party member mixes up the gameplay. You always start with a party of three. There are a total of six controllable characters and each has unique techniques and powers. For example, one character can overheat if it does too many continuous moves without cooling and causes friendly fire damage, but the payoff is that this character does not have moves that are restricted to MP. Another party member has a technique that allows you to capture opponents to use in future battles as allies. The final party member attacks randomly in the sense that we do not know what they'll be throwing at their opponent, but each of these attacks is also affected by what time period the opponents are in. Whilst changing the time period opponents are in in normal battles can amplify status effects, with this character they can also amplify single attacks. By having a great party of characters this resulted in mixing and matching characters and also trying out different strategies. The battle system takes its influence from Chrono Trigger and the original Final Fantasy VII, whereby there is a time bar for attacks which can be altered through buffs to the party or debuffs to opponents and vice versa. The mechanic that makes this game's battle system is the manipulation of time, being able to send opponents to the past or to the future, and in the process changing their stats, looks and potentially their weaknesses. Most enemies, including some of the bosses, have three evolutions, past, present and future. This mechanic has the ability to swing the battle in your favour, whether it's through turning poison from a turn by turn chip away at your opponent's HP status effect to a one-off attack, or turning a metal opponents that have been soaked by a water attack to a rusted machine by putting them in the future. The mechanic implores the player to try different techniques and combinations. Chris Bell's moves list also develops over time, and most of the attacks she learns will come in useful in the later stages of the game. With her powers, you can reverse an opponent or a party member back to the state they were in last turn. This is great for party members that were killed or against opponents that have just buffed their stats. There are certain battles that rely on this mechanic. Again, this reinforces the importance of time in the game, adding to the story. One of the unique selling points of Chris Tales has to be its art style. There are certain games in which are known for their art style, such as Hollow Knight and Cuphead, and in my opinion Chris Tales should be in the same conversation. The game reminded me of Paper Mario and Child of Light, both of which had very memorable art directions. Each of the areas and terrains pop and stand out in their own way, whether it is a strikingly green trees, blue flowing water or fiery lava. Each island offers something different and the dungeons, if we can call them that, add to this. Sewers, forges and futuristic utopias are explorable and each feel unique. Another strong point are the cutscenes used throughout to tell the story. These are glorious and left me wanting a Chris Tales animation. They really add to the story and bring a sense of grandeur too. Another part of Chris Tales presentation that was an immediate 10 out of 10 for me was the soundtrack. It hit all the right notes at the right time, enhanced every part of the game. There wasn't a single track that sounded out of place. In terms of my final verdict, Chris Tales is a success story for indie developer Modus Games. It definitely had a difficult task in living up to the legacy of the games that influenced it, but at the same time, Chris Tales manages to do its own thing. It has a good story that I enjoyed throughout, great characters and was a very fun experience despite the final quarter having a dip in quality. It is packed with charm and the world it builds is unique and memorable. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the game and for me, Chris Tales deserves a 4 out of 5. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know whether you enjoyed Chris Tales. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you on another. Thanks.